Good morning, Milestone Church. Well, welcome to our church. We're so excited that you're here today. We cannot wait to see what God is going to do and how he's going to move today in our services. If you could do a couple of things for me, I would really appreciate it. One, we would love to maximize space uh, in, in our sanctuary as much as possible. So if you could do me a huge favor, if you could scoot together and kind of get rid of all the empty seats in between you, that would be great. Or if you're a family of four or five, if you all can move to one end and that would open up about three or four chairs on the outside for another family to come and sit. Uh, we would greatly uh, appreciate that. We want to maximize size uh, as much as humanly possible. If you have kids today and you're attending, we have children's ministry going on. Uh, you can head out into the lobby. If you're coming in the front doors, look to the right. You'll see a kids' men check-in area. Uh, someone will be there to get you set up. It's nursery uh, through fifth grade, uh, and they have a great time back there. And so we would love to have your kids join us uh, today. We also have an overflow room available. Maybe your space is too tight or you need a little bit more room to move around. Or we have a projector screen and a sound system and a great viewing experience back there. When you exit the sanctuary doors, if you keep walking to the right after you see the water fountains, uh, you will find the overflow room. Um, and it's a great viewing experience, like I said. So that's available to you also. Uh, that's all I have real quick. Thank you so much for accommodating us and all these things we ask. Remember to scooch close together and let's make as much room as possible. We cannot wait to see what God is going to do in our services today. Have a great morning and just remember that God loves you.
morning, Milestone Church. Well, welcome to our church. We're so excited that you're here today. We cannot wait to see what God is going to do and how he's going to move today in our services. If you could do a couple of things for me, I would really appreciate it. One, we would love to maximize space uh, in, in our sanctuary as much as possible. So if you could do me a huge favor, if you could scoot together and kind of get rid of all the empty seats in between you, that would be great. Or if you're a family of four or five, if you all can move to one end, and that would open up about three or four chairs on the outside for another family to come and sit. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that. We want to maximize size uh, as much as humanly possible. If you have kids today and you're attending, we have children's ministry going on. Uh, you can head out into the lobby. If you're coming in the front doors, look to the right. You'll see a kids men check-in area. Uh, someone will be there to get you set up. It's nursery uh, through fifth grade. Uh, and they have a great time back there. And so we would love to have your kids join us uh, today. We also have an overflow room available. Maybe space is too tight or you need a little bit more room to move around. Or we have a projector screen and a sound system and a great viewing experience back there. When you exit the sanctuary doors, if you keep walking to the right after you see the water fountains, uh, you will find the overflow room. Um, and it's a great viewing experience, like I said. So that's available to you also. Uh, if that's all I have real quick, thank you so much for accommodating us and all these things we ask. Remember to scooch close together and let's make as much room as possible. We cannot wait to see what God is going to do in our services today. Have a great morning and just remember that God loves you. Day, mothers, if you guys would stand up, let's worship Jesus this morning. He is worthy to be praised.
Nobody but Jesus who pulled me out of that pit. He did, he did, who paid for all of our sin. Nobody but Jesus who rescued me from that grave. Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise. Nobody but Jesus who rescued me from that grave. seat this morning. Good morning, Milestone. How are we this morning? Great. How you doing? Awesome. I am great. Thank you for asking, Jamie. Um, welcome to Milestone. Happy Mother's Day. Um, we are so grateful and thankful that you chose to come and celebrate with us this morning. And as a special Mother's Day treat, you've got Marianne Evans, who's going to be sharing with us um, later on. So we're excited to hear that. Um, if this is your first time with us, you're visiting with us, um, we want to say thank you for being here, and we are going to ask one favor of you while you're here. Um, this is our Connect card. Um, we've got some out at the Next Steps area, or there's a QR code behind me. Um, but if you would fill this out, we would love to connect with you um, and know that you were here with us today. Um, so if you wouldn't mind filling that out, we would be thankful. And if you do fill it out um, the old-fashioned way with a, with a pen, you can drop it in the offering box on the right as you go out. Um, and speaking of offering, we have three ways to give here. We're so thankful for our faithful givers that are pouring into what we can do here. But um, the three ways you can give, you can text the number on the screen, which is 84321. Um, you can give through the Church Center app, or you can give cash or check out in the box. And speaking of the Church Center app, um, that is the way that we um, stay connected in our, in our house. And it has everything from our calendars to dates, has all of our small groups, anything you want to be involved in, um, you can find it there. You can also find that information at our Next Steps area. And if you're looking for something to be involved in, I'm going to give just a, a shameless plug to my favorite thing for you to be involved in. So I'm, I don't think I said my name. I'm Chris, by the way, and I am the, uh, the student leader here. And if you're looking for a place to get connected, whether you've got a student and you want them to get connected, Bring them out Wednesday nights. We have a great time Wednesday night. We would love to see your students here with us. But if you've also, if you've got a heart and would love to serve with students, if you've got a heart for students and want to want to minister and pour into their lives, we would love to have you with us serving on Wednesday night. So if that's something that you're interested in, reach out to me. I would love to talk to you about it, get you some more information, and um, see if we can get you plugged in. Because that's one of the great things and one of the things that we really care about seeing everybody plugged in, whether it's a small group or whether it's in one of our awesome uh, ministry opportunities. So um, let's, uh, that's all I've got for you. Let's pray and then we'll go back to worship. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you, Father, for um, your many blessings. We thank you for this Mother's Day that we can come and celebrate the wonderful mothers and, and women in our lives, Lord. And Father, we can't go past this moment without acknowledging that this is a, can be a painful day for some people, whether they're missing mothers or um, whether there's been other loss in their lives or whether their experience was just not good. And we pray that in this moment, Lord, you give peace and comfort through your Holy Spirit as only you can. Um, and Father, we just want to ask that in this moment, Lord, each one of us, you would help us to clear our minds and open our hearts, Lord, to what you have for us today. We are so thankful for your and mercy, and we ask all of this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, all right, 
stand up and we'll go back to worship, I guess. Well, we got a God that turns grace into garden. And you couldn't feel me.
guys can have a seat this morning. I want to pray for us real quick. Tell me, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your love. And though to us, if we were to love something the way that you love us, after being failed, after being lied to, after sinning over and over again, Lord, it would seem reckless. But we thank you for your godly love, for your agape love, for the love that never fails, that we can never earn, Lord, but you say that we're worth it. And we just thank you for that, Father, today. I pray, Lord, for Marianne as she speaks to us, that, Lord, the words that come out of her mouth resonate. Lord, that our hearts are softened, willing to listen. Have your way in this place, Father. And thank you for showing up so we can feel your spirit. Thank you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Today is a beautiful day of celebration, a day to honor the women who've shaped us, nurtured us, and walked us through life. It's a day to say thanks to 
all the moms. Moms with toddlers tearing through the house and moms whose babies have moved away. Moms who are doing this all by themselves and moms who loved a child in need. Moms who have suffered unimaginable loss and moms whose children are moms themselves. For all the times your love made things better, and the moments your wisdom made things clear, for the way you lived as an example, so we could see Jesus through you, for each and every memory that has lit the path we walk, we say thank you. Whether this is a day of celebration, reflection, or heartache, know that you are loved. Happy Mother's Day. Well, good morning. How are you doing today? You doing well? All right, let's try that again. Good night. This is a 1030 crowd. Good morning. How are you doing today? You doing well? All right. Very, very good. I want to welcome you guys here this morning. My name's Robert. I get the privilege of being uh, the pastor here, and we're really thankful and grateful for all that God has been doing here uh, at the Oak Ridge Campus Milestone Church. And if you're looking for a place to get connected to, as Chris said, we would love to help you be a part of what's happening and going on here. God's been doing some incredible things, and so uh, we would love to help you get you plugged in so you can find your place, so ultimately that you can make a difference. And so one of the things that we're praying for as a church family, if you look out, uh, besides the cars that are parked out there, you can see there's some uh, fragments of a building out there that is going to be a new auditorium at some point. And so as soon as the city gives us the okay, and we've been praying about that for some time, so let's continue to pray. But hopefully we're on the home stretch and we can work that out and we can start moving some dirt and uh, get that going. So you be in prayer about that. We're excited about the great opportunity that we have. Also, I want to welcome those that are joining us online this morning. I want to say a special Mother's Day uh, to my mother uh, who couldn't be here this morning. So she said that she was going to be watching online. So mom, I hope that you're watching. So I'm giving you a shout out. Love you. Miss you. Wish you could be here. And then I also want to say good morning to all the people that are in the overflow room. We have an overflow room and I believe every seat is full back there. And I just want you guys to know, even though that you're not in the room, when the marriage supper takes place, all right, when we're all there in heaven, you guys get first in line, okay? I just want you to know that. And so, so grateful for you guys and thankful. And uh, today we have a special, special uh, lady that is a part of our church family. Uh, She's been here for some time, and uh, I guess as you said, around like 14, 15 years, something like that and has been a part of this church, and we love her family very, very dearly. So this is Marianne Evans, and uh, Kenny uh, is her husband. Some of you may know Kenny. Raise your hand back there, Kenny. All right, Kenny's all the way in the back, and I'll go ahead and introduce him for you because she forgot to talk about you during the first service. So anyway, it's all right. Here we go. But uh, let's give them a warm welcome this morning, and uh, we're so glad to have them here with us. And uh, so Marianne is going to be sharing her testimony and uh, what God's been teaching her is her journey about being a mom. And um, you continue to pray for her and her family as God continues to use them. I just want to pray for you before we start this morning, okay? Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for Marianne. Thank you for her heart. Thank you for her testimony. God, thank you for her family and just them being friends over the years. And today, God, I pray that you just continue to speak through her that you empower her, God, that you give her wisdom as she shares. And I pray for each and every individual that's here today. And I pray that something that's said this morning, Lord, would speak to their heart. And if anybody's here today that doesn't know you, we pray that today would be the day that they come into a personal relationship with you. We love you. We thank you for Jesus. And we ask it in his name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Am I on? This morning, Tyler had me muted. He's tired of hearing from his mother. Um, now, first off, I want to say Happy Mother's Day. It is truly an honor to be here and to be uh, God's vessel this morning. This is not about me. This is about God and just how good he's been in my life and how faithful. Look, I'm not a public speaker. It's my least favorite thing to do. Um, I teach pre-K, and so I'm used to saying, you know, like, get your finger out of your nose and stuff like that. Like, this is a little different ball game for me. But um, God has been so good to me that I can't help but share. Um, even if it's uncomfortable, I'm going to share. And um, you'll, you'll get to hear some of my story, but 
first I want to tell you, yes, my name is Marion Evans. I have been a member of Milestone for about 15 years. Um, this is my family. And I'm going to start with Kenny because I did forget him this morning. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> I caught back up later, though. But um, I've been married to Kenny for almost 29 years. Um, and then I have Tyler. Um, and they, he's married. He's, you've, you know him because he is the video guy. You see him on the video all the time. He handles all the technical stuff. And he is the one who helps me when I don't know what to do with my phone. <laughs> we go to Tyler. Um, but he is um, a big blessing in my life. And he's married to Lindsay, who is a fantastic daughter-in-law. And then I have, they have my two little nuggets that I'm going to tell you about later, Evie and Bryn. Um, and then I have Lane, who is, he was on staff at Milestone for a while. And now he just recently took a church at um, LifeBridge in Loudoun. And he just got married to Farron, another wonderful daughter-in-law. Um, in October, they're purchasing a house, and I'm sure they will add to my Grand Nugget collection soon. And then I have um, my baby girl, Savannah, who is a rising senior at MTSU, and I'm super proud of her. She, um, we take her next uh, Saturday and drop her off in Alabama, and she is going to work in New Mexico, Texas, and Colorado doing student life camps with LifeWay. Um, for the whole summer. So we will miss her, but super excited for this opportunity for her. Um, but all my kids basically were raised here in this church. And um, one of the reasons that we ended up here, because it was such a good place for me to get them plugged in. A lot of times people ask, how are your kids like so, like they're, they go to church, they don't um, they, they've stayed in church, and it's because we gave them a responsibility at church. And um, this church allowed Tyler to play drums and get plugged in with the um, media, which has become his job. And then they also allowed Lane and Savannah to, uh, they grew up in the kids' ministry leading, and um, now they're both in ministry. So my first mom advice is to get your kids plugged in in a church, give them a job. My kids never said to me, Mom, are we going to church? Because they knew they were because they had a job to do once we got here. So that's super important. But when Robert asked me, and normally I don't sound like this, but my allergies are like kicking my tail, so I sound like a bass singer, sorry. But um, when Robert asked me to speak today, I got to thinking about being a mom and... This is going to sound weird, but lots of losses came to my mind. Loss of sleep. Loss of getting to go to the bathroom by yourself. Loss of taking a shower by yourself. Loss of quiet time. And um, I think really my um, relationship with God, I felt like suffered when my kids were young because I was busy taking care of everybody else and I really neglected myself and my relationship with God. And I think we get so wrapped up in taking care of others that we find ourselves saying, God, where are you in all of this? Um, I feel like what I'm doing has no eternal value whatsoever. But mothers are actually at the, the forefront of advancing the kingdom because we are raising eternal souls and that is our should be our number one priority is teaching our kids about Jesus that's what's most important in life um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story just things that God has taught me on the way um, we're, there's lots of moms in here there's dads, there's Gigi's, there's poppies and we all have a story to tell we all have situations as you think on it that God has taught us um, life's lessons, and these are just some of mine. Um, I feel like that I have been a mom my whole entire life. I had Tyler when I was 17 years old. I got pregnant my senior year of high school and actually had him two weeks before I graduated high school. Now, it was, this was like the late 80s, 
and um, it was really hard. I was a kid myself, was not prepared for how my life was about to change, and really didn't even understand or know what was going to happen. Um, and luck, thank, thank God that I had such a great family that stepped in and filled in some of my gaps for me and really supported me. But, I mean, that was a really trying time. And if you think back to your 17-year-old mind, there's other things on going on in your life. Um, like I was still in school, and so all these people, uh, my, my classmates were, I mean, they were like sporting the 80s, you know, the vibe. That's what Savannah told me to say. The vibe, which, I mean, we had our big hair. We had our slouchy socks and our Reeboks, right, Paula? I mean, we had our neon on when we were cool. Well, I was not so cool my senior year because maternity clothes then, it was equivalent to wearing a tent. It was terrible. So that's just one thing. But, um, no, I mean, big life changes were coming my way. And um, Tyler's biological dad um, was heavily addicted to drugs, and he eventually died in prison. So I was not only... 17 raising a child but I was also trying to navigate a relationship that was terrible and it put me in positions I should have never been in and um, just some scary times um, but I am extremely thankful for Tyler he we practically grew up together um, he essence in, in essence saved my life in a lot of ways um, because I had to grow up but um I met Kenny um, when Tyler was three, and we started dating, and we married when Tyler was four and a half, and then when Tyler was five, Kenny was able to adopt him, so um, that's a bit but God moment in my life. God knew that he had a purpose for me, and he had a purpose for Tyler, and he um, sent Kenny to us, and um, not long after we were married, Kenny went into... Um, doing country he was a country music star or he wanted to be and so he um, went on the road with his band and um, it was a very insecure time in my life because he was living in bars I was at home raising kids and um, he was you know involved in the bar shenanigans and um, we basically lived two separate lives and so um, I can remember a New Year's Eve phone call that I got from him, and I could just sense something in his voice, and um, I just knew some, this is, something's not right. And so um, I thought about it for a few days, and when he came home, I said, we need to talk. And um, I said, look, I love you, and I married you for life, and I really want this to work. And he said, well, I love you too, and um, I want it to work, but there's something I need to tell you. And he said, I really hate who I've become. This is not who I'm meant to be. And I've cheated on you. And I've been, you know, drinking and all the shenanigans that go along with all that. But, um, and I could tell that he was truly broken. And he said, the only way we're going to make it is if I give my life to Christ. And um, I immediately went over to him and loved him and said, I'm, I love you. We can make this work. I forgive you. Now, if you ever have heard him tell our story, when he tells it, he makes me really sound like I am the hero. But I am not the hero. Because when we went to church on the Sunday and Kenny went forward and gave his life to Christ and was truly changed, I was so proud of him, but I was struggling because I was bitter, and I was angry, and I was hurt, and I thought to myself at one point, why in the world did you say I forgive you? I wanted to, I wanted to take it back, because I was hurt so bad, and it, it was just a hard time. It was a hard time to even be a mom, because my focus, I felt like, was all on me, and um, Kenny went back out on the road, and um, he was out in South Dakota, him and his band, and they were involved in a drunk driving accident. And I got a call about 2 a.m. one morning that said that there had been an accident and that uh, a possible fatality, but they did not know who it was. And we didn't have cell phones then. Like, I couldn't stalk him on Life360 like I do now. 
And so I just had to wait and pray, and I was scared for me, and I was scared for my kids. Um, Lane was just a baby at the time, and um, about 7 a.m., I think, I got a call from the ER doctor saying, we have your husband, he's alive, he's beaten, banged up, he's got a big cut across his chin, and he does have eternal bleeding that we're trying to get to stop. And um, if it doesn't stop, we'll have to do surgery. But they said they would call and let me know um, before they had to do that. So I hopped on a plane, first time ever flying, flew to South Dakota, rented a car, and drove two hours to the airport. Now, this is a true miracle itself because we didn't have GPSs. Not that a GPS helps me because it says 500, turn in 500 feet. I don't know how far 500 feet are. So I, I'm terrible. It makes Kenny mad. He's like, it said turn. <laughs> well, it needs to say turn up Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I could do that. But somehow I made it two hours to the hospital. And um, I was with him for about five days in the hospital while he recovered. And then he was terrified to fly home. So I doped him up real good and got him on the plane and got him back home. And then the recovery started. Um, but then I heard the dreaded words from him. I think I've been called into the ministry. No. I can't do that. I cannot be a pastor's wife. I cannot play the piano. <laughs> I cannot sing. And I don't want to be the VBS director. So the answer is no. And I said, don't you think if God was calling you, he would call me too? And he said, you're just going to have to trust me. And so that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years is trusting God and trusting Kenny and um, he's definitely a he's a, a godly man and a, a great leader he leads my family very well um, so he went on staff at a church and he did like youth and music and I said we were a great team because I was like the guidance counselor and he was the principal and it just worked out real well we um, really enjoyed ourselves and um, I began struggling with my salvation Look, I was a church kid. I was at church all the time. My papa drove the church bus, so I had to go. But I was in Bible school. I knew all the Bible stories and the Bible lessons, and I, had, I, I knew a lot about the Bible. I just did not have a relationship with Jesus. And I, I kept asking Kenny all the time, like, how do you know that you're saved? And he would say, well, first off, I was there when it happened. And he said, and I have never been the same. And there's evidence in his life that he was changed. And I just felt like I didn't have that. And so I can remember the, the preacher was preaching on a Sunday night. And I did not hear one word he said. I was just having a conversation with God, like, what are these people going to think about me? I have counseled their kids. I've led some of them to Christ. Like, what are they going to think of me? And I just felt it in my spirit this is your time, you, you better go now. So right when he gave the invitation, I bolted up there, and he said, who are we praying for? And I said, me. Um, so I gave my life to Christ that day, and I have never been the same. Um, look, I had good morals. I had actually even Christian morals. I was a good person. You can, you can have good morals. You can be a preacher. You can be a teacher. You can be a leader. You can be a door greeter. You can make the coffee. You can do all those things which are good things, but they, that will not get you to heaven. That is not what salvation is. You cannot pray a prayer and then get up and live life how you want to live it. That is not salvation. God changes you. I've heard Kenny say a million times, if you've not been changed, then you need Christ. He changes you. And you don't want to live your life that way. And it is a choice, and it's a choice that I make every single day. Sometimes multiple times a day, I choose you, Jesus, over and over. And, you know, a lot of times it's, it's harder in the good times. Because when it's the bad times, it's easy to call on God because that's where you turn. But when things are going smoothly and good, that's sometimes when I kind of slack off. And I have to remind myself, I choose you. I choose you, Jesus. Um, so I want you to know, if you have never been changed, 
or if you've said a prayer like I did when I was younger, but it, you have not been changed and you've not made that choice every day, I'm so glad that you're here today because you can make that choice today. Um, and another thing, too, if you want to know what God's will is for your life, you want to know what your purpose is, and you're just waiting on a word, he's already gave us his word. If you want to know, truly know his character and what you're supposed to live like, it's, our, it's in, his, in the, his word. You just have to look for it. Um, I was telling you about Tyler, and he, Tyler started playing drums here like immediately when we moved to this church. Um, and then Lane and Savannah were in kids, they, they started singing in kids' church, doing all the little dance moves, and they were so cute, and um, singing, and then it progressed, and Lane, I think when he was in seventh or eighth grade, started playing bass guitar and leading some songs, and then Savannah has been singing with the worship team since she was 12, and her freshman year of high school, she um, was at school, and uh, these girls brought a water bottle to school, and it had vodka in it. And um, Savannah didn't know what was in it. They probably could have said it had vodka in it. She still wouldn't have known what it was. But um, she's kind of a, li a little blonde, but so naive, but it's so sweet. <laughs> I love her so much. But she was just naive and didn't know what that was. And she took a drink of it. They videoed her, turned it in, so she got expelled from public school for a, a whole year and um, we eventually went to some appeals but savannah was so tore up because she's like here i am in front of people singing and she she just did not feel worthy and so we had to work through that with her but it was so hard as a mom to watch her be so broken and i wanted to fix it so bad um, it was actually one of the hardest things that i've been through um, as a mom um, but we were getting ready to do our last appeal, and she came to me, and she said, I just really feel like that I'm supposed to go to the alternative school because they had reduced her sentence from a year to 45 days in the alternative school. Um, and so I said, okay, we'll pray about it. So we began praying about it, and we went to church on Sunday, and um, Pastor Robert was preaching on Luke 5. And what's happening in Luke 5 is – the crowds are kind of closing in on Jesus. They want to hear what he has to say. And he finds two boats that are kind of parked close to shore. So he gets in one of the boats. It happens to be Simon Peter's boat. And um, he, he preaches to the crowd and teaches the crowd from the boat. Well, the, the fishermen had been out fishing all night and had caught nothing. So after Jesus had... Um, taught, he said, now push off from the shore and cast your nets out. And in verse 5, Simon Peter says, Master, we have fished all night long and caught nothing. Here's the word, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they done this, they caught a great number of fish. Um, we even had, they had little cards sitting in all of our chairs that said nevertheless on it. And this is what I got from that. Nevertheless, Lord, even though we do not want to walk through this storm, we will put one foot in front of the other at your word and go. And so on Monday morning, me and Kenny drove Savannah to the alternative school. I watched them search her two times. I was brokenhearted. Um, Savannah learned so much and grew so much. She became friends to, to kids who didn't have good friends. And some of them still contact her for advice and such um she the staff there said she is we've enjoyed her she's a light here there seems to be a lot of darkness you see savannah wasn't like in the group where they do like iss in school suspension she was in what you call the gray shirts that's long-term people they wear gray collared shirts we still aggravate her about we're like no 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 you're part of the gray shirts you just we don't want to hear you but we have to aggravate her. You have to laugh about something. Um, so she grew. Like, God became real to her in those moments because that's who she had to rely on. And what did I learn as a mom, as a Christ follower? I learned that the world is watching how you do hard. They're watching how we handle hard. Do we 
uh, go on social media and bash people. Don't, I wanted to. I wanted to really talk about people like in my community. I was hurt and mad and bitter. But, but I knew God said, you have to show grace because I've shown grace to you. So that's what I learned. The world's watching how you handle things and situations. Um, and now I'm going to tell you about my little pride and joys. This is my Bryn and Evie. And when, when Bryn was a little baby, my mom was watching her. And Lindsay was at work and Tyler was at work. And um, me and Kenny, when I got off work, we um, went by and got Evie at the daycare and showed back up at Tyler and Lindsay's house. And Tyler got there about the same time. And so mom opened the door and walked out with baby Bryn. And Tyler and Lindsay have a big dog named Ollie, a big golden doodle, who was super excited that her daddy was home. So she took off running and hit my mom, and I watched my mom fall off of the porch with Bryn, and I saw Bryn's head bounce off of the sidewalk. And I immediately just started screaming, and Kenny ran over and picked up Bryn, and she had blood coming out of her nose, her head was bleeding, and um, Tyler ran over to my mom, and Tyler said, go, 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 get, on, get her to the hospital. So we jumped right back in the car and um, drove to the ER. They lived pretty close. And, um, like, Bryn was crying so hard she couldn't hardly catch her breath. And I just began praying out loud, Lord, this is, this is going to be a brain injury. This is going to be a cracked skull. You have to do something. Please, please, please do something. And um, we got to the ER, and Kenny ran in with Bryn. And um, when Lindsay got there, um, Kenny got back in the car, and we went and checked on my mom. And then two hours later, we got a phone call from Lindsay. They were on their way home, and all Bryn had was road rash. She was just scratched and bleeding from the road rash. And I was like, God, you have just let me witness a miracle and a lot of people don't get to see miracles I got to see a miracle and I said right that right then I will share this whenever I get the opportunity what a good God like he protected her and took care of her and you know I tell my kids all the time life is mountains and valleys if you're in a valley there's a mountain coming but if you're on a mountain watch out there's probably a valley coming too and that's kind of what happened to me. I was on the mountain because I got to witness a miracle. But Satan just snuck his little foot in there. And then all of a sudden, I began my probably the worst battle of my life with fear and anxiety. I became fearful of everything. So much so that Lindsay wouldn't even tell me some of the things that happened with the girls. Because I would stay up all night. Like, my dreams were fearful. I mean, I would wake up four and five times scared of every I made up things to be scared about and I, I learned that fear is a liar it's of Satan and I knew he had gotten in and um, it was almost like a PTSD time for me um, it was a big struggle and um, it affected every part of my life um, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10 5 that we have to take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And I knew that I needed to take my thoughts captive. So while this was going on too, um, my little Everly, she had developmental delays. And um, I work in education. Lindsay's the best, she's back there, she's the best Googler on the planet. Um, so we both were digging in. We knew something was going on with Evie. Um, and I would just kept saying to, to Lindsay, look, right now it's just a developmental delay. That's what we're going to deal with. It'll be okay. But I was worried and fearful myself. We just had to keep talking to each other off of a ledge. Um, and then last summer, my little Evie got diagnosed with autism. And it really was a punch in the gut, even though we both knew it was coming. And we took some time, a couple of days, to mourn 
and um, then I, God just picked us up and dusted us off and said, you got work to do, and um, Evie absolutely could not have been born to better parents, um, the perfect parents for her. Um, I just can't even say, um, if I talk anymore about it, I'm going to cry, so I'm going to move on. But um, it almost became easier once we got over the initial shock of the diagnosis. Then we were able to really get to work. She got into ABA therapy. She was in, um, she got into the preschool. And, like, they, they have different goals for her. And, like, she has these word lists. And she's just breezing through the word list. She knows every character on Paw Patrol. She knows every superhero name. We have no idea how she even knows some of them. It's crazy. So, um, God once again showed up. And I had to remember, Evie is his. He doesn't make any mistakes. That's his that's his responsibility, it's her. And, um, but while I was in the middle of all this heavy fear, Savannah sang a song at church that she'd sung millions of times. It just resonated differently. And it was called Surrounded. And it says, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And it talks about how this is how I fight my battles. So I began really searching because I was having such trouble with fear um, and I was doing a Bible study on um, this little app called She Reads Truth. And um, all these people go on after they do the study and they comment. And there was this one user named Church Mouse. And she posted this. And I grabbed onto it. It stays in my Bible all the time because I have to read it to myself constantly. I'm going to read it to you now. So Satan has waged war on me. No matter how old or young, he's waged it on all of us. I mean, that's his job. His weapons are fear, worry, anxiety, nagging thoughts, etc. I am scarred and battle-weary. I wake up each day to do battle again. I pour my coffee and open my Bible. I take my sword and shield once again. My winning strategy is God, and my battle hymn is this is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Each morning in the quiet, I can hear swords clash, and my spirit is strengthened with every verse I read. I will choose worship as my response, my weapon. No matter the circumstance, there is a cross and an empty tomb in our story, so we know that we win, because God cannot lose. Um, I discovered this book called um, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table by Louis Giglio. And um, I read this book, and then I went to my small group, and I told Robert I was going to do a free plug for my small group, any small group. And if you're part of my small group, will you stand up? There's some, a lot of them are back, they work in the kids' ministry. I could not do life without these ladies. They are so, so special to me. We have sat around at a table and prayed and uh, went to God on each other's behalf. Um, I literally could not do life without them. So this is the free plug. If you're not in a small group, you need to get in one. It is life-changing. It is good for your mental health, your spirit to be in a small group. So I think you can go on the at Church Center app or you can see somebody at the next step table and they'll be able to help you find you a small group. But we began doing this Bible study, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. And it's all about Psalm 23. Now we've all heard Psalm 23. It is um, oftentimes read at funerals. Um, but maybe you'll look at it a little different after this. I'm gonna read it to you. Well, i got to put my glasses on because I'm old and I cannot see very well. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I lack. He lets me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life and he leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. 
Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Verse 5 says, that he prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. And I thought, that's so odd. Like, why wouldn't you prepare a table for me, like, off in a quiet, dark corner where we can share and not be interrupted? And I'm about to tell you why he does that. But something else that we do is we, we invite Satan to pull up a chair with us. When we let fear and anxiety or we put something above God, we've just invited Satan to scoot up and have some of our chicken wings or pizza or whatever we're having. It's going to be good, right? Um, And I don't know why we do that. It's a table, it's an intimate table with just two chairs. This is from the book, um, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. And this is why he puts the table where he does. The table is in the presence of our enemies because God wants you to know that you'll always have enough for every moment and every struggle. He will sustain you in every dark night, and God wants the enemies to watch you shine. Why? Because in time, they will stop gawking at you and turn their attention to the one who has you shining. The table is in the presence of your enemies so that they can hear your song. With your eyes locked on Jesus, your worship will be uninterrupted and your worship will become your weapon. Not only will God be exalted, but chains will break as you fight with this declaration. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I think as females, lots of times, we are in our heads more than men. And this is why I say that, because me and Kenny can have a a disagreement, an argument, and I've had the full fight in my head, and he doesn't even know what's going on. Like, I have fought it out. He don't even know what he said in my head, but I'm mad about it. Like, he has no idea. I just think as mom, we worry and stuff, and it's a lot of it's in our heads. It's in our thoughts. And, I, and Satan knows that. So we, our worship can be our weapon. And what I mean by that, it is an attitude of the heart. There are times where I feel defeated depressed, like I'm not worthy, like I'm not good enough, and I can turn on some worship music, just me in my living room by myself, and raise my hands and sing, and instantly I feel better. And look, you may not be a, this kind of person. I'm totally this pers- kind of person. Me and Kenny went to a youth conference years ago when he was a youth pastor, and I don't even remember who said it, but they were talking about worship and how people who raised their hands, and he says, you, you, some people aren't comfortable with this, but he said, to me, this is what this reminds me of, a child who needs their daddy, and they run to him. How do they run to him? With their arms up. And so ever since then, that's, it's res- I need him all the time. I want you to teach your children how wonderful God is, how faithful he is. Share your stories, your testimony, and show them how faithful he is. Do you know that you're not raising children, you're raising adults? Because that's what they're going to be. And guess what's going to come in their way? Fear and anxiety. Because that's what this world is. You have to teach them how to fight back. How to fight back. And that is with your Bible, with worship, take those thoughts captive. And look, I think all the time, I don't know how people make it without hope, the hope of Christ. I would be nowhere without the, without the hope of Christ. It keeps me going. So where am I now? I'm a Gigi. And might I say, I'm rocking the empty nest. 
I feel like I was raised with Tyler. We raised each other, basically, and I feel like I've always had a kid. So I'm rocking the empty nest. I'm enjoying it. I can take a bath. I can eat what I want. I can watch what I want to on TV. It's fantastic. <clears throat> My challenge for you is if, if you've said a prayer at one point in your life that your life has not changed and you're still living for yourselves, today could be a day, a special day, that you put Christ in your life and that you choose every single day. That's my desire. And then guess what? When you have it, guess who you get to teach and, and shine on? Your kids, which is the most important thing. It's eternal. You are raising eternal stars. I, um, somebody just said this to me, and I told him I was going to totally steal it. Um, he said, if we don't point our kids to Jesus, which is the number one most important thing, then all we're doing is raising clever devils, which makes a lot of sense. So my desire is that you give your life to Christ today if you don't know him. And if you battle with fear and anxiety, this altar is a great place to lay all that down and to ask Jesus to come in and help you to use worship as your weapon. If you want to pray for us, we'll turn it over to David. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now. Father, I thank you for letting me be a vessel. Lord, I pray that I have shined the spotlight off of me and shined it on you. It is all about you. You are so good and you are so faithful in my life. Lord, I pray that today, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, who does not have a personal relationship, who does not have the hope that you give, that today is the day that they make that decision. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Let's give Marianne a round of applause this morning. Thank you so Thank you so much for sharing your heart and your journey with us this morning. And my heart and my prayer, as Marianne said, is that you have a personal relationship with Jesus. You may be here today, you may know about Jesus, but you may not know Jesus. And I believe that the scripture says today's the day of salvation. If God's dealing with your heart, we love to give people an opportunity to respond. And uh, you're welcome to come pray. Some of you may be dealing with fear, anxiety. You may be feeling uh, unworthiness, but we want you to know that there is level footing at the cross. And no matter where you are, Jesus is willing and he's waiting and he's looking for you to come home. And I, my prayer today is, is that if you need to do that today, there's people up here who will pray with you. I'll be glad to talk with you. And if uh, you would like to come, man, we invite you to come. And uh, we're gonna pray right now and then we're gonna sing this song. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you just pray that you bless this time. And Lord, if there's anybody here that needs to know you today, God, I pray that you would give them the courage to take the next step. We love you. We thank you for Jesus. And we ask it in his name. I want you to stand with me. We're going to sing. If you need to come, you come this morning. Whatever the Lord's leading you to do today, just be obedient and follow him.
Well, as we conclude the service, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and sit down. We're going to do the, the church thing. Stand up, sit down, and we'll have you stand up and dismiss here in a minute. But we're going to conclude the service with something special today. Uh, it being Mother's Day, we would put together a tribute uh, for mothers, and so we want to honor them today. And so our worship team is going to sing a song uh, from uh, Taylor Swift. It's called The Best Day Ever. We know some of you didn't get to go to Nashville last week, and so we just brought it here uh, to you today. But it's a, uh, just about a song about how a little girl looks and views her mom through different stages of life. And then after the song's over with, you guys are dismissed. We have gifts for our moms as you go out the door. On the left, be sure you grab one. And if you're one of our first-time guests today, be sure you stop and get one of your first-time gifts. We'd love to say thank you for being here. Uh, and so enjoy.
That's awesome. Listen, happy Mother's Day. We love you guys. Y'all have a great week. Have a great day.